For a hole up the little. Let me have this. And listen, I'm asking you also to join me on this one year journey. If you don't have your journal, get your journal this morning. They're right over here in the right hand corner. Get your journal. Take notes every Sunday, every Tuesday. I think these journals are $5. See Beacon Darren Decker after service, or you can see him doing so. Get your journal and let's be on one a page, one a card. You ready? This is my Bible. And today, I declare it to be my final authority. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse number 27. As you know, we've been teaching, this is the eighth week we've been teaching on I declare you healed. And today's subtopic is I declare you healed according to your faith. I declare you healed according to your faith. Matthew chapter 9 beginning with verse number 27. I pray I'll be able to finish this morning's lesson. I I'm so excited. If you are a guest this morning, don't be alarmed if I just lose my mind. Because when they began to sing that song, Look at Me, I'm a testimony. It took a whole lot just to contain myself. Because when I think about all that God has done for me. Matthew chapter 9, beginning with verse number 27. If you don't have a Bible, you can find the text behind me on the big screens. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied, verse 29, and he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, will it be done to you? And their sight was restored. Take your seat, take out your pens, your journal, and let's continue to walk through this process. I declare you healed according to your faith. Everything we have discussed about healing up to this point is all possible through your faith. Eight weeks of teaching and preaching all hinge on your faith. Everything that I have tried to deposit in you can only work according to your faith. If, if, if I could, I, I wish that you can be blessed according to my faith because I'm walking in supernatural faith. And I wish that, that my faith can just rub off on you and you can have my faith. But that's not God's agenda nor God's plan. You will get what you receive according to your faith. According to, to your faith. Jesus asked these blind men a very peculiar question. He says, do you believe? Not, not, not does your pastor believe, not does your mother believe, but do you believe? I don't want to do something. Want to touch your name and say, do you believe? Do you believe? Do, do you believe? We, we, we've been operating too long under the unction of what someone else believes, but today I want to challenge you, do you believe? Do, do you believe you can overcome a pit experience? I mean, not, 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 what, not, what, not if you believe that God did it for Joseph, but do you believe you can overcome a pit experience? Do you believe that you can grow up in a dysfunctional family and dysfunctional environment and overcome the dysfunction of your past? Not what God did for somebody else, but do you believe you can overcome your dysfunctional past? I pose this question, do you believe? Do you believe you can be healed and delivered? Do you believe you can be dead free? Do you believe you can be drama free? Do, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you believe? <laughs> you see, let, let, let me give you a, a, a bit of accountability. Every promise, every promise from God, every time God says I'll open up the heavens and pour down blessings, 
every time God says I'll never leave you nor forsake you every time God says I'll bless you going in and bless you coming out every time God says I will meet all your needs God is guaranteeing you he will do his part but God will do his part only based on your faith you don't you don't like that because you want to just come in and, and, and bewitch God you, you want to twitch your nose snap your finger do your dance do your shout and you want God to open up heavens but God says I will only move according to your faith because your faith demonstrates your level of obedience and your level of trust and God has said you will never go farther than your faith can take you because you will never go farther in faith than your spirit of obedience yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. if you really want to know if you are obeying God use your faith as a litmus those with little faith have little obedience those with much faith are very obedient to the spirit to the voice and to the word of God those who have declared I'm going to do it my way I'm going to do my thing I'm going to do it as I feel your faith is failing you because you're walking in a spirit of disobedience so Jesus says do you believe now, now I think the thing about the Bible is you, 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 you have to understand the landscape you can't just pull out a, a passage and then build a thesis you have to know what took place before after and during so, so I get to this point where these blind men began to follow Jesus the, the Bible says right before that or after that they started following so what was taking place before is in the 17th verse we are introduced to the principle of new wine new wine skin in other words before some things can take place in your life you have to change your mindset God cannot do a new thing in your life and you have the same old attitude if you pour new wine in the old wine skin the old wine skin will burst and you will waste everything God just blessed you with and that's the problem with a bunch of church people we get stuck and mesmerized in one position one mindset one way and God is trying to pour some new wine and everything God is depositing is being waste because you're stuck in your own ways many people have died because they were stuck in their own ways God was trying to heal but you were stuck in your own ways new wine requires new wine skins new faith needs a new foundation to be built upon I can't expect God to do something new if I stay old Oh, I don't think you're getting this this morning. Many of you will be stuck in your current reality because you will not leave your current mindset. So before these blind men followed Jesus, the principle of new wine skin, new wine took place. In other words, God desires to do something in this house, in this place, but God desires, first of all, for you to change the way you view yourself. Because if you think of yourself as being broke, you will stay broke. If you think of yourself of being that way, you will stay that way. Change will not take place physically, financially, emotionally until you have thought differently. Watch this, watch, watch this. Verse 27. As Jesus went on from there. Meaning something took place before he got there. All through the text before that, miracles were taking place. Miracles were being performed. And listen, I dare you, in your own personal life, begin to chart and track and trace the miracles that God has performed not just in the Bible but in your life 
so that next time you're going through something you can take out your journal and begin to track your past miracles so you can tell your new situation I know what God can do because there will be times when your body and your mind will be confused because you're going through spiritual warfare there will be times where you're being attacked from every side there will be times where you will get a report like Hezekiah they're coming from the north, south, east and west to get you and if you focus on them coming at you you'll lose the battle but if you take out your jaws but the last time they came God turned my enemy into my footstool no weapon formed against me shall prosper the last time I lost a job I got a better job the last time a relationship went sour I found my Boaz. Just start tracking your miracles and watch how God will work in your life. Yeah, the devil wants to psych you out, man. The devil wants to make you think what you're going through right now will define you and defeat you. But your pastor come to declare what you're going through right now. One day you will look back and say, it didn't define me nor defeat me, but it helped make me. David reminds us in the book of Psalms chapter 40. David says, the Lord brought me through miry clay, a slippery pit. The enemy was after me. David says, everything that could go wrong was going wrong. Yet the Lord heard my cry. David was charting his previous victories. That's one thing about David when he went against the giant. David said, when the bear came. The Lord was with me. When the lion came, the Lord was with me. What David was doing was building his faith up so when the giant came up, it wouldn't be a first time encounter. The giant is nothing but a different bow. The giant is nothing but a different lion. And if God can give me, little old David, a victory over a bad lion, I can beat you too, Goliath. What has the Lord done for you lately? Has the Lord done anything for you? So why are you tripping right now? He hasn't stopped being God. For a matter of fact, tell your worst situation you're going through right now. Be, put it in front of you right now. Whatever, maybe your house is about to be foreclosed on. Maybe your marriage is in divorce court. Maybe you got a doctor's appointment. Maybe your child has a court date. Maybe, maybe all kind of hell is against you. But I dare you to stand up right now in a spirit of boldness according to your faith and start declaring it looks like a job for El Shaddai. It looks like a job for El Shaddai. Listen, listen, listen. I was on a mini vacation this week and I was sitting in the restaurant enjoying my breakfast and the devil started playing tricks with my mind. The devil said, remember when you went to the hospital and prayed for this lady and she was feeling fatigued and she was a strong, independent lady and she went to the doctor, Sister Nisi, and she called her pastor to meet at the doctor and they didn't know what was wrong and they found out she had some cancer inside of her but she was doing fine until they told her she had cancer and then within 48 hours they went inside and she died. The devil started telling me this. Oh. And I'm sitting there and tears start to flow down my face the breakfast table, that's the, but it looks like a job for El Shaddai. I will not die because it looks like a job for El Shaddai. And I dare you to tell your marriage, tell your finances, tell your future, you will not die. It's just another job for El Shaddai. So, so now we get to the focal point of verse 27 where these blind men, meaning they could not see. But these blind men started to follow Jesus. Right. Discover this.